All right, everybody, welcome to session 4A of essentially Itchcar People on Machine Learning and Theory Reasoning. This is a series of four short talks, um, all of which are pre-recorded. And so I'm going to start with the paper by Jan Jakobov and the team from Prague on Enigma the Anonymous. Hello, welcome to the presentation of our system description called Enigma Anonymous symbol independence inference guiding machine. Uh, the main topic of this talk is automated theorem proving, so we will start with a short, brief description, brief introduction to automated theorem proving. Then we will move on to the description of the Enigma system and how we use machine learning inside automated theorem problems. And then we will conclude with some experiments we did on Mizar Mathematical Library. So let's start with automated theorem proving. Automated theorem provers are used to solve problems in the first order logic when you have basic facts expressed by variables, functions, symbols, predicate symbols, and you create more complex statements using logical connectives like conjunction, disjunctions, and variable quantifiers. In general, whenever you have a first order logic problem, you can pass it to the automated theorem provers and it gives you output a proof or it gives you a counterexample or it can also happen that it just loops forever. In practice, automated theorem provers are used for software and hardware verification. They are used to prove mathematical statements and they are also used as an assistance for interactive theorem provers in system called hammers. Uh, the question we are trying to address in our research, how much can machine learning help inside automated theorem provers? That is, can we learn from previous proofs and to use it, use this information to solve more problems? A first order logic problem consists of a conjecture we are trying to prove from a set of assumptions. In this example, we are trying to prove that one plus one equals to in a simple arithmetic. Many ATPs internally work with clauses. We mainly work with e-prover, which translate formulas to clauses, thus eliminating all logical connectives other than disjunction and negation. Next, a search for contradiction is initiated. Hence, instead of trying that A implies B, we are trying to prove that A and the negation of the of the conjecture leads to the contradiction. An ATP takes all the input clauses and runs a saturation loop in order to search for the contradiction. Hopefully, it outputs a proof. A proof is a sequence of clauses and they up with the contradiction represented by an empty clause. Each clause in the proof is either one of the input clauses or it is a direct consequence of one of the previous proof clauses. Inside E, unprocessed clauses are stored in a priority queue sorted internally by E prover. In each iteration, the clause from the top of the queue is selected for processing and it's moved to the set of processed clauses. Whenever a clause is being processed, all the inferences with previously processed clauses must be tried. Here, a new clause can get inferred. It gets weighted by E and is placed in the queue. This continues until the proof is found or the prover runs out of the unprocessed clauses. Let's proceed with the description of the Enigma system. Whenever an E prover conducts a successful proof search and gives us a proof, we can inspect the set of clauses processed during the proof search. Any clause which appears in the final proof can be called positive, that is a clause necessary for the proof. On the other hand, processing of clauses not in the proof might have been avoided and we consider them negative training samples. Once we extract training samples like this from many proof searches, we can feed them to a machine learner. A machine learner is something to which we can send a bunch of training samples and it outputs a model. The model is something where we can put an arbitrary clause 
and it classifies it either as negative or positive. This classification is based on the information from the training samples. There are many existing different machine learners, and each of them tries to memorize and generalize information from the training samples in a different way. Once we have a closed classification model, we can use it to guide the proof search inside eProver. Our implementation adds a new Enigma evaluation queue next to the standard eProver queue. In the Enigma priority queue, the positively classified clauses are prioritized and always processed before negative clauses. We then alternate the three queues to select the clauses for processing. When a new clause is inferred, we ask the model about its classification. Accordingly, the clause is put to an appropriate position in the queue. Apart from that, the clause gets weighted by standard e-prover and is put to the standard e-prover queue. We use two modes to guide the proof search by Enigma. In the cooperative mode, we use some standard e queue together with Enigma queue. In a solo mode, we use the Enigma queue to guide the proof search. The cooperative mode usually performs better, but we still use the solo mode to provide additional valuable training samples. Apart from that, it's useful for debugging to check that the model has learned well. One of the machine learning methods quite successful in the practice are decision trees. We work with a variant called gradient boosted decision trees. In order to use decision trees, clauses must be represented by fixed length numeric vectors. One has to come up with an appropriate cross representation and it is something we have from our previous research. In this work, we experiment with symbol independent features by removing symbol names from all the clauses. The only information we keep about the symbol is its arity. Also, we use a simple but fast feature hashing to handle large feature vectors. We use the implementation provided by XGBoost and Light GBM libraries. Another well-established machine learning methods are neural networks. In particular, we work with graph neural networks. In neural networks, clauses are represented by tensors. A tensor is a multidimensional vector and it does not need to have a fixed length. Again, symbol names are anonymized and we employ the implementation provided by the TensorFlow library. Let's conclude with the experiment section. We experiment with Mizar mathematical library, which contains huge amount of math statements with human written proofs. Around 60,000 of these problems were exported to the first order logic and we try ATPs to find their proofs automatically. All the models are evaluated with a fixed 10 seconds time limit on a single CPU. On the other hand, multiple CPUs and GPUs are used to train the models. We fix some standard good e-prover strategy which can solve around 50,000 of problems. From the solution, we train decision tree models and neural network models. In the following, we use the notation S plus M to denote the cooperative mode of S with M. So, we have around 60,000 problems and e-prover. We use e-prover to solve as much as possible and obtain 5,000 of proofs. From these, we extract positive and negative training examples and we train XGBoost and LightGBM models. This model is plugged into the e-prover, yielding enigmatic e-prover with an enigma model inside. We can use the enigmatic e-prover to attack the Mizar problems, and we obtain 5,000 proofs more than before. These give us new training examples, and we build new models and solve 3,000 more problems. This process can be iterated, building new models from new training samples. We iterate this process three times. Moreover, we conduct the same experiment for neural networks, this time training models using TensorFlow. Again, we obtain new proofs and new training samples and iterate. 
Thus, we conduct the same experiment separately for decision trees and neural networks. It allows us to compare the power of different machine learning methods. The experiment results are depicted in this table. The first row describes the e-performance without any machine learning guidance. The next three lines describe decision tree models, and the last three lines describe neural models' performance. The middle four columns provide model statistics like true positive and negative testing rates, model sizes, and training times. The last two columns describe ATP performance. We can see that neural models exhibit a better testing rate, but a slightly worse ATP performance. When we take the union of all the solved problems, we obtain more than 28,000 proofs. This tells us that decision tree models and neural networks are quite complementary methods, that is to say that there is no clear winner. Finally, after the deadline, when there was enough time to conduct more experiments, we used both the methods in cooperation, joining the training samples for, from both the methods and performing several more iterations of training and testing. After a few more iterations, we obtained more than 38,000 of proofs. This concludes our talk, so thank you for your attention. And if you are interested, you can check up our GitHub repository with interesting Mizar proofs by Enigma. Enjoy. All right, thank you. We have three minutes if anybody has any talks, uh, any questions. Uh, Stefan, uh, you didn't raise your hand. I'll read out Stefan's question and uh, you What is the difference in speed between XG Boost and TensorFlow? during training, but in particular, during proof search. Uh, Jan, unmute yourself and speak. Uh, okay, thank you. So for the, for the, for the training, uh, it is basically we use both them as a, basically as a, as a black box. So we just need to represent for the XG boost and like GBM, we represent the clauses as vectors and for uh, TensorFlow, we represent clauses by tensors. Uh, the difference in both cases, in both during during evaluation and training, is that for TensorFlow, several clauses are always set to the trainer together in, in batches, but while for like GBM and XGBoost, we always feed uh, only a single clause, or even when the training, the clauses are separated and they are fitted one by one to the to the trainer. And when evaluating, we also use the decision tree models to evaluate a single clause. While for GNN, we evaluate always a multiple clauses. So with TensorFlow inside eProver, we always collect several several clauses, and then. And then when we have there is there is a cache of unprocessed clauses before the clauses are put into the set of unprocessed clauses, we keep them in some in unevaluated state. And when we have enough clauses, we ask the graph neural network for their evaluation, and then we then we add them to the unprocessed clauses. So that there are some differences. Okay, great. Uh, we got another question from Michael Beeson. Who asks. 10 seconds is a very short time. Would you get more proofs with 30 seconds or longer? Uh, yeah, definitely we are getting more proofs. In our next experiments, we have extended it to 30 seconds, and now we are even using one minute time, uh, time limit for problem. It takes, it takes forever to evaluate, but we are getting more and more new proofs. Great. Does anybody else have another question? Raise a hand or type it in the QA. All right, then let's thank Jan. Okay, thank you.